Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and one of the things that I've heard a lot of, especially recently, is this discussion about pulling forces and pushing forces. Now this is a kind of discussion that usually by the end of it, physicists will be stating that you don't know what you're talking about. This is usually because these types of arguments are made by flat earthers or pseudoscientists. And it usually results in people saying that gravity doesn't exist, especially if it's a flat earther making the argument. Now to ordinary people that might not know a whole lot about this kind of stuff, these arguments may make sense. However, when you just dig a little bit into it, they do quickly fall apart. So let's get started. So first we have to define what a pushing force and what a pulling force is. A pushing force is any force that repels an object. So if you push on something, that's a pushing force. A pulling force on the other hand is any force that attracts an object. So gravity is a pulling force for example. Now most people will agree to that and they'll say yep that makes sense even though when you really think about it, it doesn't really make sense but we are going to get into that. Now the next part of the argument is usually something like all forces are pushing forces. And the way that they'll demonstrate this is by pulling on something to open it. And initially that may not make sense, but it actually makes a lot more sense than you'd think. Because if you think about it, if I pull on my pop filter here, what am I actually doing? Am I pulling it or am I pushing it? To me it may seem like I'm pulling on it, but what's actually happening is my hand is pushing on it to move it towards me. So that is something that most people will agree with. That you know, if you pull something, you're actually pushing it. Again, there are problems with that, which we will get to. Then all of that is usually followed up by, well, I've just shown that pulling forces don't exist, and gravity says that it's supposed to be a pulling force, so therefore gravity must not exist either. So obviously there are some pretty big problems, especially with that last one, considering the fact that, you know, gravity exists. So let's start with the obvious response. When objects push against one another, well, that's a different force to the force of gravity. When you demonstrate that whenever you pull something or push something with your hands, you're actually always pushing it, you're not dealing with gravity. You're dealing with, you know, objects interacting with objects via the electromagnetic force. So therefore, you cannot take these interactions to then extrapolate it to say that gravity doesn't exist. But if you want to go even further than that, you can say, well, gravity is not a force. So it can't be a push force or a pull force if it is not a force. In reality, the only reason why we perceive gravity to act as a force is because we are three dimensional beings. We're not built to see that if a planet is orbiting a star, it's actually moving in a straight line through space time. We're just not built to see that. So from our 3D understanding, it looks like a force, so we can treat it as a force if we want to, but in reality, it's not actually a force. And because it's not actually a force and objects are just moving in a straight line through space time, then it's not actually pulling or pushing on anything. And this is usually where flat earthers will say something along the lines of, well, if gravity is not a force, then it clearly doesn't exist. Uh, which is wrong, because things don't have to be a force to exist. Flat earth is not a force, so therefore flat earth doesn't exist. Checkmate flirts, but that is an argument for another time. But it's not just in its conclusion that the argument completely fails. It actually fails before then in its premises. Because in attempting to demonstrate that pulling forces don't actually exist, it does actually inadvertently demonstrate pulling forces. So let me pull my pop filter again. Even though there was some pushing forces there, pulling forces were still involved. And the reason for this is because I am a human, not a blob of atoms. I exist with shape. The same goes for this pop filter right here. It exists with shape, so therefore, something is holding it together. So that means if something is holding it together, it's not being pushed together, there's some pulling force there that's holding this entire thing together, isn't there? There's also the fact that when I pull this, well, my hand isn't just simply ripped off because there's nothing holding my hand to the body. You know, there is a pulling force that keeps my whole body intact. And that is one of the parts of the argument that just simply doesn't work. But what if I were to tell you that the whole idea of 
pushing forces and pulling forces is just preposterous to begin with. The reason is because magnet. And because I said that, that basically makes me become Nigel Cheesy Hands now, doesn't it? Oops. So, magnetism. The force that means that if I've got two magnets, they will easily attract like that. So that's a pull force, right? Well, if I turn one of the magnets around, all of a sudden, they don't want to come together. They actually repel each other. So, I've just turned a pulling force into a pushing force. And just to iterate my point, this is a compass. Does it point north because the needle is being pulled to point north? Or does it point north because the needle is being pushed by the south to point north? My whole point here is that thinking of forces in terms of does it push or does it pull is not a good way to think about forces because forces are often more complicated than that. I'm also pretty sure that there's a yo mama joke there about being absolutely repulsive while at the same time being large enough to generate a gravitational field. But maybe that's what we need to learn from forces. Maybe what we need to learn from forces is that the universe is just the setup for one big yo mama joke. That would be funny if it were true though. And just in case it is true, I'm not going to say the joke because if I do, then because the universe is the setup to that joke, saying that joke may end the universe. So I'm not taking that risk. And to think that I almost had a video that was completely serious. Not on this channel. No way. Not this time. Not this time. No. Not this time. It never happened. It never happened. Not this time. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. Now, getting back to the more serious part of the video, because despite all the joking that we do, there is a little bit of seriousness that we have. So the whole argument around pushing forces or pulling forces and all forces having to be one or the other, it just falls apart on every level. And that's not to mention that there are other aspects of the universe that we haven't even touched on. For example, you have the strong nuclear force, which is responsible for basically keeping the universe together. And on top of that, you have the weak nuclear force, which honestly confuses me a lot because it has to do with things like particle decay and stuff like that. And then there's the whole idea of, are forces actually even forces? When you really get down to it, which forces are actually a force? And when you really get down to it like that, the whole idea of a push force and a pull force and all forces having to be in one of those boxes really just makes no sense. Because the universe is really complicated and you can't always simplify things down to push or pull. Unless it's a door. 